good. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Dr. Clark, the Center for Weight Loss Success. Today in Lose Weight USA, we're going to talk a little bit more about something we started yes, or last week, uh, estrogen dominance, estrogen deficiency. A little bit different. So we're talk, going a little deeper dive into some of the sex hormones, if you want to call them that, and both estrogen and or estradiol, as well as we'll pull in a little more progesterone. I'll probably talk a little bit on testosterone as well. But the real topic here is kind of estrogen dominance versus estrogen deficiency, which is basically menopause. And how does it affect you? And what, what can you do about it? All right. Welcome to Losing Weight USA. Real-time answers to your weight loss questions. Some of the latest research as well as updates. A little bit of expert advice. Gives you direct access not only to me, but you should be receiving the health tips and recipes via the membership portal. And I encourage you, get into the membership portal. We keep adding more and more things in there. Each of these webinars will last about a half hour or so. If you have questions during the presentation, just type them into the chat box as we go along. We'll get to them at the end. If you think of things once we're all done, just give us a yell here at the Center for Weight Loss Success, the email is success at cfwls.com. Phone number 757-873-1880. And I do want to kind of put a little note in there in the chat box is that Yes, we are now in our new facility. The address is 711. Everybody can remember that number, right? 711 makes you think a little convenience store in the corner. There's about every corner in the, in the world. So 711 Brick Kiln Boulevard, Newport News, Virginia. So 711 Brick Kiln Boulevard. But uh, the store is open. We're seeing patients there. So we're doing hormone replacement there as well as how kind of we've got the injections also available again. So they're kind of backed and we'll be, uh, um, you should receive flyers on them, but if you have any questions, just give us a yell. All right, very good. So again, we are talking about estrogen dominance, estrogen deficiency, and kind of going into a little bit deeper dive here. So let me switch the slides. Very good, there we go. All right, so. I'm in the, my new office as well, which looks like my really old office because I have the same desk. And so I'm moving out of my home office back into our regular office doing these webinars. All right. So with any hormone, I say this all the time, balance is key. And it's very true with estrogen as well as any of the sex hormones, testosterone is the other major one. Balance is absolutely key there. Now, hormones, again, just a little reminder, hormones just are chemical messengers. That's all they are. They help you help uh, the tissues communicate with one another. So a hormone is a chemical messenger. It's made by a certain organ, a hormone producing organ, and subsequently it's released into the bloodstream. It sends out this message to any tissue that has the receptor on it. And only the tissues with the receptors can actually respond or get the message and subsequently do something. So it's that lock and key. The hormone kind of is the, actually you call it the key there. It has to fit in the receptor, which is the lock. And subsequently the key fits in perfectly. The right message is transferred. And subsequently the tissue that received the message will do something. And the hormones are really just the main tools that our body uses to maintain homeostasis, which is basically balance. Okay. Again, hormone balance, I say it over and over, is very, very key. Now, as I mentioned last week, kind of sex hormones themselves, they're all derived from cholesterol. So cholesterol is one of those things we can't do without. It. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to have no cholesterol. Okay. Sometimes may seem like your family doctor wants you to have really low cholesterol. You shouldn't because cholesterol is used in so many other things. Sex hormones are just one of them. And the sex hormones, what we refer to when I say sex hormones is testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Estrogen, okay, humans make three types of estrogen. Estrone, which we call E1. Estradiol which is the most important one, which is referred to as E2, that's where the dye comes in, and estriol, which is E3, okay? Estriol is very important in pregnancy. Estradiol is really your main hormone throughout your lifetime. 
S drone, you would like to keep to a relative minimum, and especially as we get older. That's both men and women like to keep S drone because S drone, as we talked about last week, typically makes it a lot easier to gain weight. Okay, so men and women share these hormones. It's not like this is a woman's hormone, this is a man's hormone. It's like, no, we share these hormones. The only real difference is the absolute and kind of as well as the relative amounts and of each of them during certain periods of our life. And, and just to, you know, I'm going to take that uh, uh, kind of a thought, and I'll digress, just so that with, even with estrogen, you know, we think of that as a woman's hormone, but men need some estrogen as well. Now, it's not like the testicles are making a whole lot of estrogen. It's like, no, actually, the estrogen is made from the, in men, kind of the estrogen comes from the breakdown of testosterone. And just kind of the take that kind of for women then actually for women if we could measure all the testosterone you made throughout your lifetime and compare it to all the estrogen you made throughout your lifetime women actually make more testosterone than they do estrogen it's just that a lot of the testosterone that's made is actually then converted to estradiol and estradiol is kind of a, really the primary female hormone then Okay, so typically in women, kind of the adrenal glands and the ovaries, mainly the ovaries, both produce estrogen. And estrogen has many, many, fun, over 400 different functions on all kinds of different tissues. So it's not like, oh, it only does, you know, put women's go through a cycle. Like for it, that's estrogen. Yes, it is. But there are 400 different functions, over 400 different functions. And it occurs in many of the tissues. And the receptors, okay, the receptors are found throughout your body. So it's not only in the, you know, the reproductive organs or the breast tissue or just the female organs it's like now the, the receptors are throughout the body and the receptors wouldn't be there throughout the body if it wasn't important so there's many receptors in the brain there is some breast tissue all along the blood vessels and of course then the reproductive organs as well and estrogens themselves are critical for sexual maturation. So as a child goes through adolescence into maturity, into adulthood, that's the sex hormones. Okay, that and estrogen is a very important one for that. So kind of that sexual maturation through puberty and then into the reproductive cycle. And again, adult women have three primary estrogens. Estradiol is the most important one, but then there's also estrone and estriol, which and not a whole lot to talk about there for the other ones. So now again, I labeled this kind of talk as kind of estrogen dominance versus estrogen deficiency. What does that actually mean? When I talked about hormone balance being key, what we're really saying then, and when I say estrogen dominance, is that well, there may actually be some imbalance in that there's more estrogen in relation to the other hormones. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to mean it's too much estrogen. It's just in relation to some of the other hormones then. And when we get to estrogen deficiency, then it's also, it isn't like there's zero, but the balance is off, it's, it's thrown off again. And then we're talking about much lower levels of estrogen. <clears throat> and you have to think about it that throughout our lifetime, this is true men and women, hormones continue to change from the time kind of we're, you know, go through adolescence to then, you know, as we get into old age then, okay. So the hormones continue to change and they're different amounts at different times. Now, just from a, the generality, hormone production and estrogen specifically, estrogen, estradiol specifically, usually peaks at around age 25. Okay. But the estradiol production then remains fairly stable till about around menopause. And menopause basically means the ovaries quit working, then the estradiol levels go way down. Okay. So hormone production, especially estrogen, peaks about age 25, stays fairly stable okay, till menopause, which the average age is 51, 52, okay, and then drops way off. So estrogen dominance, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that typically for women going through cycles,
cycles. The reason you go through cycles is because the day-to-day -day amounts of estrogen and progesterone change. And subsequently then it's that balance between the estrogen and progesterone that causes you to have a cycle. That or if you want, and when the hormones levels change, now you'll have a cycle. Okay. So what's the issue then? The issue is that progesterone tends to slowly decrease from age 25. Now I mentioned that, gee, estrogen peaks around age 25 and it stays pretty stable. Progesterone tends to start dropping off then as women age. And subsequently then as the progesterone drops off, now in relation, you have estrogen dominance there. So the estrogen is higher in relation to that progesterone amount. And so as progesterone slowly drops, then subsequently then becomes that balance becomes, that imbalance becomes a little more severe. And subsequently some women then are very prone to certain symptoms and especially kind of around cycles and things like that. Now at menopause, and again, menopause means that you know, the ovaries quit working, which means they no longer produce the estradiol. So now the estrogen production drops way down. And that's when we're talking about estrogen deficiency. Then. So it depends on time of life where we're talking about whether it's estrogen dominance versus estrogen deficiency. All right, so just a little graphic if you can see it, you got it. But basically, it's just a graph that shows that, that typically progesterone starts dropping at about the age of 25, um, but it doesn't go to zero, okay? as well as the estrogen doesn't really start dropping much until around the perimenopausal period, which perimenopausal just means around menopause. In the average age, again, for menopause, 51, somewhere right around there. But uh, women sometimes will develop sim some symptoms of perimenopausal uh, things, even up to 10 years ahead of time, sometimes then you know, lasting for a long time after they're through menopause as well. All right, so isn't this just aging? Well, yes, it is just aging, but again, kind of that poor balance tends to make a number of kind of medical problems tends to make them a little worse or more symptomatic. It can, and that estrogen dominance tends to uh, disturb a little bit of thyroid function. And part of that is because thyroid binding proteins, which means that these proteins actually bind the thyroid hormone, it'll make that somewhat worse. So if the thyroid binding proteins have bound some of the thyroid hormone, it can't work as well. So it does throw off some other things too. It also tends to worsen insulin resistance. And as women approach menopause and through menopause, they find that, hey, they don't really say, hey, insulin resistance is worse. But what they know is that, gee, it's a lot easier to gain weight. That's part of insulin resistance right there, which then leads to that weight gain and kind of and subsequently, as we talked about last time, the last week, about the estrone in relation and it starts going higher because estrone actually can be made by the fatty tissue. And estrone, once it's made by the fatty tissue, makes them even more prone to store fat. Again, so the more weight someone has, the more fatty tissue someone has, it actually is easier to gain more weight. Okay? It may not be fair, may not be good, but it's the way it is. Okay? Some of these things can be worsened by ex environmental exposures, especially a lot of the things that are in the plastics. You know, we talk about, you know, I talk about trying to avoid processed foods, trying to avoid kind of the, the plastics that are in there, the phthalates, the xenoestrogens that are often in plastics. Now, a lot of them are labeled as they won't have it in there, which is good. They don't have it in there. But some plastic thing, plastic products, subsequently then can throw off estrogen levels too. And again, poor balance leads to symptoms and potential symptoms often before you would anticipate they would get them. So what are some of those symptoms of estrogen dominance then? Well, you may notice that kind of it, it, they're often 
similar to some of what we often refer to as premenstrual symptoms, mood swings, anxiety, weepiness, irritability, depression, panic attacks, insomnia, but it can also influence joint pain, just overall discomfort, whether it makes fibromyalgia worse, which is the soft tissue here, including the muscles and soft tissues that are just uncomfortable. Okay. But it also influences more bloating, heavy cycles, can develop fibroids of the uterus, fibrocystic breast tissue, more apt to happen, lack of sex drive. Some of these uh, also occur when, as testosterone levels drop off in women too. And as we talked about last time, it, the uh, testosterone is extremely important for women. And again, actually you make more testosterone throughout your lifetime than, than estrogen. But testosterone, very important. And testosterone tends to drop off also from late 20s to uh, early 30s all the way down to a lifetime. Basically, it keeps slowly dropping again. Menopause goes way, way, way down. But then it also influences lack of sex drive, difficulty concentrating, carbohydrate cravings. Um, some people are very prone to headaches and migraines. It also tends to the weight gain, water retention. Part of that is if you lose the protective effect of the testosterone, you're more apt to gain weight, retain water as well. So what's the treatment? Okay, so it really kind of depends on what the problem is because is it a testosterone type deficiency? Is it the estrogen dominance? Um, very low progesterone levels, potentially, adding a small amount of progesterone can fix some of the symptoms. Now, I'm just going to digress here about a little discussion about progesterone. Progesterone is a bioidentical progesterone, which means that it looks exactly the way your body made it, as opposed to progestins, which was the working ingredient in a lot of uh, progesterone products, such as Prem Pro which was primary and progesterone. It wasn't really progesterone, it was progestins. And progestins were where all the problems that people talk about, hormone problems, that's where they came from. But progesterone itself, progesterone, bioidentical progesterone, looks exactly the way your body made, is incredibly safe. You, know, you could take massive doses of progesterone. The issue with progesterone, it can fix symptoms, but the biggest side effect, most common side effect of progesterone is weight gain. And obviously, most people hate that. Women hate that. Men hate that, too. But progesterone, the biggest side effect is weight gain with it. And exercise helps. I kind of prevent that. But still, um, that I, I don't like to use progesterone if we don't need it. Okay? But it can actually fix some symptoms. Okay. Okay, diet stuff is also very important. I mentioned kind of avoiding processed food, avoiding kind of uh, plastic materials you know, that are in a lot of the um, packaging. Okay. So diet is very important. So what thing in a diet can really help this then? Well, something that's called dienomethane. Okay, dienomethane is, an, uh, if you want to call it a phytonutrient or an herbal thing, it's in cruciferous vegetables, dienomethane or dim, dim is what we call it for short. Broccoli, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts, those are the major ones. But they can really help. The, the, those vegetables can actually help. But actually taking the dim as a supplement, the methane as a supplement can help. And how that works, okay, uh, dim really helps promote a healthier breakdown of estrogen. So your body makes this estrogen, or if we were to give it to you, this estrogen, um, estradiol we're talking about specifically. As estradiol breaks down, it can go along multiple different pathways throughout your body. Well, one of these pathways actually makes you a higher risk of developing either breast problems or uterine problems. And then another pathway, though, actually makes it a protective pathway. It actually protects you from breast problems, uterine problems. So methane actually helps force it down the protective pathway. 
And if we can force it down the estrogen breakdown, to break down along a protective pathway, it's a much healthier breakdown of that estrogen. Then. And subsequently, then it makes you know, a lower risk. And literally anyone can be a dim. Okay, yeah, you need, well, I encourage you to drink, eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables, but still, typically, you'd have to eat a mountain every day. Okay? But you can actually buy dim supplements. Okay? We have it at our nutritional store. And I certainly encourage any person, whether male or female, whether they're, if they're doing pellet or hormone supplements, they absolutely need to be taken dim. Absolutely. So it can be taken in a supplement. And easy to do, just for women, it's once a day. Men, they take it twice a day because they need bigger doses. All right, so that was kind of estrogen dominance. Now, what about estrogen deficiency? Estrogen deficiency basically means that estrogen levels are next to nothing. They may not truly be nothing because the adrenal glands can make a little bit of estradiol. But typically, that's what menopause is, meaning that the ovaries quit working. The average age, again, is around 51 or so. The estrogen will sometimes help fix symptoms associated with menopause. Okay? The most common symptoms of menopause that women often notice are the night sweats, hot flashes, and also vaginal dryness. Those three things right there, hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, that is what estrogen supplements, you know, for, your, uh, for people are being treated with estrogen. That's what it treats, okay? But it can also help with preventing painful intercourse, just from the dryness, the irritability. Um, but uh, you can potentially help with depression, memory problems, as well as kind of decreased energy. Now, a lot of the other menopausal symptoms, brain fog, body aches and pains, poor sleep, low energy, low libido, those are often low testosterone problems. And so I've probably mentioned them in the past that often when we talk about hormone replacement, we're usually talking about, hey, replacing testosterone, which fixes so many things. Testosterone is such a safe hormone, but it fixes so many other things. And then adding a little bit of estrogen. And my overall philosophy on that is use a small amount of estrogen in estradiol, and it should be bioidentical, that fixes night sweats, hot flashes, vaginal dryness. If we fix those three things, testosterone, then we get a lot more leeway with because testosterone is incredibly safe. So bioidentical treatment of both testosterone and estradiol low numbers is can help lots of different things. And it also tends to, uh, the, the positive functions, it tends to control menopausal symptoms, but other health benefits that are there, can increase your HDL, which is the good cholesterol, you can decrease the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, it helps improve skin and hair problems, it tends to reduce fine lines with aging, uh, can rejuvenate some of the pelvic musculature, which then makes it less likely to get um, urinary incontinence as well as urinary uh, infections, so it can decrease UTIs, um, so it can help with a lot of different things that are associated with menopausal symptoms. All right, so in summary, okay, estrogen dominance and estrogen deficiency, they're very real potential problems. doesn't mean everybody has these problems. It isn't in your head, though. It is a natural part of aging, but that doesn't mean it can't be treated or shouldn't be treated. Now, to treat it, it should absolutely use bioidentical hormones, which again means it looks exact. A hormone looks exactly the way your body made it. Therefore, it, the receptors, it, it, a better attachment, better messaging system, as well as then the breakdown of the actual hormone works a lot better because a lot of the problems with when talk about when people mention hormone problems isn't necessarily the hormone itself it can be the breakdown products and if it's a bioidentical hormone your body knows what to do with those breakdown products if it's not it's a synthetic it's a, a synthetic hormone which basically means there's just a little extra side branch on it it's not broken down completely the same 
subsequently, those breakdown products can potentially cause problems as well. And this can be a, a potential answer for many symptoms for both women and men. Again, not just women, but women and men. And that's kind of what we do, and I've done this now for 12 years. It's kind of, it used to be more of a hobby as I was doing my main job of surgery and weight loss also. But now it's kind of, okay, this has become more and more what we do. And it's all through the Center for Weight Loss Success, but we have a second corporation set up as Center for Hormone Health and Wellness. And you can get more information by going to www center for hormone health and wellness.com or just give us a call here the, the phone number they all bring it to the same place but the, the phone number for the hormone side of it is 757-223-0940 but you just hit our regular number as well you'll get the same place all right question don't see any questions sitting out there but it is a, a very interesting topic and it's a topic that affects you know, all women at some point, okay, all women eventually go through menopause. They may not get all the symptoms of the estrogen dominant side of the whole thing, but all women eventually go through menopause. And just take that a step further. Some women have very minimal symptoms as they go through menopause. It may only last a short period of time, a number of months or so, sometimes a short period of time, may actually be a couple of years. So other women, though, have the symptoms literally indefinitely. You know, it can be years and years and years. And it's a very treatable thing. And so subsequently to, to consider treatment is like, gee, it can, it can really help fix a lot of symptoms. All right. Again, if you think of questions, don't hesitate to give us a yell here at the Center for Weight Loss Success. Um, email again, success at cfwls.com. Phone number 757-873-1880. Stop by our new office. The nutritional store is open. Um, you can get your body comp done as well. Log into the membership portal. You should be receiving the health tips and recipes. Then tune in each Tuesday, 12:15 for the next webinar. Watch your email for the invite and link. And remember, it's your life. Make it a healthy one. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.